Hi, and welcome to this introduction to Drum Leveler from Sound Radix, a unique new way to control the dynamics of your drum tracks. Here we see Drum Leveler processing the snare channel in an acoustic drum kit setup. And the first thing we notice is the scrolling, zoomable display, showing audio levels for the track, with each snare hit highlighted. Drum Leveler uses intelligent look-ahead algorithms to analyse incoming audio and detect drum hits that fall between the minimum and maximum threshold levels, which we can set by dragging the horizontal blue lines on the display. We can then manipulate the levels of those drum hits quickly and easily using the large compression knob below. With this knob all the way up at 100%, the level of each snare hit is adjusted so it hits the target level which we can set by dragging the orange line on the display. Unlike conventional compression, each drum hit is adjusted in level without changing the shape of the initial transient or the relative level of the sustain. And individual hits might be turned up or down depending on the target level. Drum hits that have been increased in volume are colored orange on the display while those that are reduced in level are coloured blue. For a more subtle effect, we can turn the compression knob back down. With the setting of 50%, each hit is moved only halfway to the target level. Settings below 50% can be very subtle and transparent, yet still make a significant difference to the feel of your drum tracks. Toggle the bypass button at the top right to compare with the original version. We can also turn the compression knob down into negative values and we're now exaggerating the dynamics of the performance with drum hits moving further away from the target level instead of closer to it. Again, without changing the sound of the drum as with conventional dynamics processing. Of course, compressors are critical for drum sounds in most modern productions precisely because of the way they can shape the transients and add extra punch or fatness but this also makes them less useful when trying to control the dynamics of the actual performance. As the more compression is applied, the more the drum sound changes. Drum Leveler is not intended to replace your favourite compressors. You can still use these to shape the sound you want. Then control the dynamics of the performance independently using Drum Leveler. Or you can run Drum Leveler first to even out the levels before they hit the compression which can sometimes help to achieve a more consistent attack. Having isolated the drum hits we want, we can now optionally reduce the bits in between using the gate range knob. This does a great job of reducing spill between drum mics and is much quicker and easier to set up than a traditional noise gate. If necessary, you can adjust the tails of the hits using the recovery time and hold time parameters. And you can use the gain range parameter to prevent the levels of your drum hits changing by more than the specified amount. This can be especially useful when using negative compression values to increase the dynamic range. The sensitivity knob over to the left allows you to adjust the transient detection if needed. But with a simple scenario such as this, the default settings should work fine. The minimum re-trigger control next to it allows you to glue consecutive hits together. So if a quiet ghost note is immediately followed by a loud accent, the relative levels of the two hits will be preserved. Turn it up to link more adjacent hits, or down to control those hits separately. Ok, let's try a more complex signal. Here we see an instance processing the stereo overhead mics and I can enable steep surgical sidechain filters at the bottom to restrict processing to just the snare and toms. You can listen to the sidechain filters by pressing the S button to the right and can switch to a band reject mode instead of a band pass if needed. Alternatively, you can use the external sidechain input to drive the processing from a different signal. The sidechain routing method will depend on the host you are using and the plugin format, so you may need to consult the manual if you're not sure how to achieve this. 
when you've routed the signal, you will also need to enable the external sidechain button at the bottom. I'm now processing the room mics, but with the sidechain patched from the snare chain, so I can bring up just the snare drum in the room mics. Stereo signals have linked processing for the left and right channels by default to preserve stereo imaging. But you can switch to dual mono mode if you need to process left and right channels independently. Or MS mode to process mid and side channels independently. In both cases, you can use the view buttons to the right to show the processing for just one of the channels. And to dial in separate settings for each. So I could, for example, create a super wide and roomy snare drum while leaving the rest of the kit alone. Drum Leveler is also great for creative processing of drum loops. The steep sidechain filters make it easy to pick out specific parts of the loop, such as the kick drum, or the snare. and the gate range parameter makes it easy to isolate these and separate them from the rest of the loop. I could also set the sidechain filters to detect both kick and snare, then drag the target level down to minus 80 dB to effectively kill them completely, leaving just the parts in between, and allowing me to split kick, snare and hi-hats off onto separate channels. Notice that the gate range parameter can also be turned up to positive values, so increasing the levels in between hits instead of reducing them. This creates unique upward compression effects, which can subtly bring out quiet details with low settings, or create dramatic pumping effects when turned up higher. You can also use Drum Leveler to process other types of audio, such as this synth pad, for example, with the drum loop as sidechain input. I'll use the sidechain filters to isolate the snare drum, and then turn down the gate range parameter to create a synth stab on every snare hit. Let's turn the recovery time down to make the end of the note more abrupt and turn up hold instead to set the length of each stab. Turning the compression knob down to negative values will impose the dynamics of the drum track onto the processed signal, while turning it up will add the opposite dynamics, making the synth part louder when the drums are quiet and vice versa. In the same way, I could gate a constant bass part so that it hits in sync with every kick drum. Or alternatively, I could turn the compression knob all the way up and drag the target level all the way down, and duck a bass part for every kick drum, leaving only the bits in between. Or even do both at the same time with two different bass sounds. When using a stereo sidechain source, such as this wide panned conga loop, you can also switch to dual mono mode and make your synth or guitar tracks bounce from left to right, as we can see on the output meters to the right. Notice the meters are coloured to indicate the frequency content of the audio. These spectral meters glow red to indicate low frequencies, or blue for high frequencies. You can adjust input or output levels by dragging the fader handles superimposed, and can unlink the faders with the button underneath, in case you need to set different levels for the left and right channels. So in summary, Drum Leveler allows you to manipulate your drum and percussion tracks in ways not previously possible. You can use it to make novice drummers sound more experienced and confident in their performance, or you can be creative and use it to manipulate drum sounds in new and interesting ways. That's all I've got time for in this video. Thanks for watching.